We come from inside the education system. And I have a vision for education. My vision is to empower young people to create a better world. In relationship and responsibility, self to self, self to others, and self to our wonderful planet. And this is my story, from a teacher to a system change maker. In 1997, as a young teacher um, of biology and chemistry, I was so impressed by my students, especially by the little ones. They had so many ideas. They spread it out and solved ecological and social problems. I was, it was incredible. I was deeply impressed. They wanted to engage. They wanted to collaborate. They loved to be creative. They loved to take responsibility with passion and joy. All they need is that we as adults believe in them, that we as adults trust in them, and let them free. That means give them many opportunities to act in the real world so that they can feel, oh, I'm important. I can do something for the common good. It was a lesson for my life. I never forgot this. It was a deep, infinitely experience for me and the rest of my teacher's life. So as a principal, you have more influence. So I decided to become principal. And uh, as, as such, I had the privilege <laughs> to uh, build up two extraordinary schools. One in 1996 in an underprivileged region, and the next one in Berlin in 2007. The Berlin school became actually well known worldwide as a role model for paradigm change, for changing culture. That means human-centered instead of outcome-centered, putting radically students in charge so that learning can become rational, scientific, general, and simultaneously personal, intuitive, meaningful, and embodied. Most of our schools are full of triggers for competitive thinking, putting ego before community. What we need is our schools based on the four pillars of learning, learn to learn, learn to act, learn to live together, and learning to be. And I enjoy, really, that one student of my Berlin school is here as an expert, Jamila. The school I learn in is built on a complete new mindset because our school understood that we students learn best out of creativity. Therefore, our school should inspire and really motivate us. And to accomplish that, our school rapidly opened up to the world outside and to non-formal education with self-organized, project-based learning and very unusual extracurricula. And she said, at best, we have to learn how to live together. And in order to do that, we actually have to learn and live together. And that's why in our school, everyone is welcome, also refugees or children with special needs or disabilities. And we all learn together in aged mixed groups and profiting from each other's strengths and really learning from one another. And the learning is very individual and personalized. And we learn mostly by ourselves, the basics. And the rest is project-based learning. And once a week, we even have a whole project day where we learn in teams and work on very interesting self-chosen questions. And we also don't get grades the first few years, which is very important and prevents the competition and additionally takes away a lot of pressure so that we students are no longer afraid of failing. We are allowed to fail and are encouraged to learn from our mistakes, to really take them as a chance to get better, which I think is very important because without failing, there would be no improvement. So instead of grades, we get personal certificates that really value our accomplishments and our personal development. And now our teachers, they get a totally different role as well. Instead of simple educators who stand in front of us, they suddenly become our personal coaches who guide us. And so once a week, we meet up for personal coaching with our tutor. And my tutor is the one I can always turn to when I have any problems or when I need some help. So that I know, despite all my freedom and self-responsibility I have in the system, 
I'm still never left alone. Now, you might think that all these things I've just mentioned are pretty awesome for our school these days, and I agree, they are. But our most important subjects are our three subjects in life, responsibility, challenges, and intercultural experiences. Now, the first one, the Responsibility Project, gives us the opportunity to experience what it means to take over responsibility. Because later in our lives, we all have to take over responsibility for ourselves, for others, for our families, and in the end, for the whole world. So why not starting to learn about responsibility in school? And I'm not talking about reading books with the title Responsibility on them. I'm talking about responsibility in our daily lives, like taking care of elderly people, or helping refugees, or underprivileged children. And that's exactly what we do as 12 and 13 year olds in our responsibility project. Once a week for two years, we take over responsibility in a social or ecological engagement. And the most important experience for me in that project was that even as a 12 year old, I was able to help people and my help was appreciated. I was needed and I was valued and I was important to others. And I realized back then that even I as a child can make a change, and I as a child can be a change maker if I want to, and I want to. So you see that responsibility is just extremely important for our society and therefore should be part of every educational system. Now, we also know that extreme challenges lay ahead of us that we probably can't even imagine yet, um, therefore the job of schools should be to um, prepare us for the unforeseen. And th when we, that's why our second subject in life that we do three times is called the Challenge Project. When we're 13, 14, and 15 years old, we spend three weeks out of our hometown without our parents or teachers and only 150 euro facing a big self-chosen challenge, which can be anything. I mean, if you're afraid of big animals, for instance, um, your challenge could be to work on a horse farm for three weeks. Or if you're as unathletic as I am, you spend your three weeks hiking in the mountains. Uh, one of my challenge projects was um, to give children a voice and write a book about school with two of my schoolmates. The challenge project is just all about overcoming your personal challenges and fears. And you will really get to know yourself and you will outgrow yourself because you will make mistakes and you will fail. But that's okay because you will learn from it and you will stand up again. You have to. Life goes on. And I think a challenge is a very great opportunity to learn and to grow. And in the end of the day, you will realize uh, what great potential and abilities are hiding inside you. I mean, I learned so much about myself in this time, and I also learned to deal with insecurities because I never knew what would happen the next day. And therefore, when you come back from those three weeks of pure challenges, uh, you will start seeing the world with different eyes. I know I did. And um, these, all these experiences you make in those three challenge projects are experiences um, you will never forget. And some students, me included, even say that they learn more in those three weeks than in the rest of the school year. So now our last subject in life um, focuses on intercultural experiences, which I think is very important for the future. And therefore, when we're 16 years old, We are all going abroad for at least three months and engage ourselves in a social or ecological project in another culture. And you can basically do anything anywhere. I mean, like sinking a well in Bolivia or planting trees in the rainforest in Ghana or helping and teaching orphans in India. And again, we learn so much about a different culture out of life practice and personal experiences and not out of school books written by people who've probably never taught a day in their lives. You know, um, in my old school, they actually encouraged me to work against my fellow students. And I think that's just not what we need for the 21st century. Many great people agree with me that instead of competition and standardization, schools these days should focus on collaboration and diversity because we need people to think creatively and innovatively and critically also and independently in order to conquer the challenges of the future together. So you see, What many people are talking about, what schools should be like today, we started doing it. Wow, really inspiring. Thanks, Thanks. Jamila. <laughs> I think that's a good preparation for social entrepreneurs. <laughs> so... 
You see, learning can be such an exciting journey, and it doesn't cost any money. It's about changing attitudes. Putting the focus on humanity, empathy, collaboration, trust, responsibility, purpose. Schools can be the seat of a new humanity, unfolding the treasure within, the great treasure within our human potential. So many people know and feel that there is something fundamentally wrong with, in our education system. What is missing are pictures of the new. The great desire of the new, missing the pictures. And so many people want to visit our school. They cannot believe what's going on. And so we had to handle and find a way with the thousands of visitors. Our answer, breaking the rules. Students, coach, teachers, principals, managers. So we do in-house training. We reach over 100 people a month, and we also have outside trainings. For example, students give workshops in schools and also in companies. Students are on the move in roadshows, and students often are speakers in conferences. Here you see Paulina and Evie, 14 years old, with 5,500 teachers in Switzerland. So, the vision of education system change is spreading around the world. And if young students speak from their hearts with passion, enthusiasm, and glowing eyes, they have the power to infect the audience with the virus to change. They have the power to touch hearts, as Jamila did. So, I became a change maker, a social entrepreneur. I'm an Ashoka Fellow. <laughs> uh, together with these wonderful students and, of course, many, ad many adults. Every year, we reach an audience about 30,000 people. Every year, 30,000 people. And to have more impact, I founded the initiative School in Transformation, which is in German, Schule im Aufbruch. It's a powerful bottom-up movement. The, the initiative gives inspiration, support, network, for example, with MOOCs, with webinars, with conferences, films, and so on. And in Austria, in, in Germany, it was founded in 2012, and two years later, it was founded in Austria in 2014. And in Austria, in the last three years, it spread it to the whole of Austria as a significant change maker. From bottom up, schools learning from one another. School in Transformation was also implanted successfully in Poland, and actually other European countries are interested in. System change is hard work. System change in education system is a fundamental urgency. And the old system has a big power. Many people, teachers, parents, are afraid of the new, the unknown. They tend to um, stick on old patterns, and they are afraid to fail. I think that is because we all were at school, afraid to fail. That's an outcome of our school system. My experience is that people need a strong vision which makes it worth to leave their comfort zone. A big a purpose to overcome their fear. And actually, we have this inspiring great vision worldwide, the 17 global goals. In September 2015, 193 world leaders committed to, to them. So, Global goals, they give hope, they give sense, they have such a big power. And we can create democratic and peaceful, inclusive and tolerant, fair and sustainable societies. Everywhere, for everyone, and no one left behind. What a great vision. Yes, it's true, the world is in crisis. 
And yet this crisis can be a vast opportunity if humans wake up. I'm, I'm not alone, alone. You're, you're not alone. alone. Together we rock the global goals. We get this done. Tell everyone, tell everyone. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not alone. alone. You're not alone. Together we rock the global goals. We get things done. Tell everyone, tell everyone. Once more, I'm, I'm not alone. alone. You're not alone. Together we rock the global goals. We get this done. Tell everyone, tell everyone. <laughs> that is actually. <laughs> We wrote the song ourselves, that is actually our school song, and the chorus of it, um, of the Global Gold song. We wrote the song ourselves. <laughs> I'm not alone, you are not alone. Utopia happens right now in many places coming from the civic society. I deeply believe that human beings are able to change things to the better. Therefore, we need courageous people with the potential and will to act used to take responsibility, self to self, self to other human beings, and to Mother Earth. Sustainability needs education for sustainability. And that's why we need quality education. Education is a main enabler. Education must give answers to the big questions of humanity. Education must provide understanding, skills, and values to empower young people to collaborate in resolving the big challenges of the 21st century. And that is the purpose of schools in the 21st century. And that's why we need education system change. Schools have a very transformative power. To change education system change, we need many people. And we need also each of, of you, each. So what we need is purpose and courage. Purpose gives motivation. Courage is the key to act. And so, 15 years ago, I created this little courage card to encourage people, and many people have it in their pocket. It's like an anchor. You have it in your pocket like an anchor. And um, to, I, I want to challenge, challenge each of you to have the courage to dream to have the courage to take responsibility and have the courage to change. Let's pioneer the possible. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you, take heart, let's start now and today, and be courageous because it's worth it, and tell everyone and focus on what we need for the future. Lessons. Learning. Homogeneity. Diversity. Fragmentation. Complexity. Instruction. Self-organization. Worksheet culture. Creativity. Rush. Stress. Time and relationships. Closed doors. Open doors. Linear thinking. Connected thinking. Right and wrong answers. Many possible answers. Competition. Collaboration. Learning in school. Taking over responsibility. Preparing the old. Thinking new. Fitting in. Breaking the rules. Compliancy. Self-efficacy. Avoiding risk. Taking risks. Knowledge. Sense. Burnout. Burn for. Thank you. <laughs>